In today's video, we're going to make a no-sew fabric pumpkin, we're going to have a thrift flip, and we're going to rust a few things for some primitive decor. My name is Cheryl, and welcome to Lifestyle of a DIYer. In our first project, we're going to make fabric pumpkins. Two methods, sew and no-sew. For the first pumpkin, I'm going to cut this thrifted fabric down to 8 by 18 inches. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew it together right here. And you'll have to let me know, do you still have a sewing machine? Now I sewed mine, but you could always use fabric glue. Okay, I have it sewn together. You can see the seam right there. And next I'm going to take this crochet thread and a craft needle. And a craft needle is just a thicker needle with a bigger eye to put the thread through and it's usually longer. We also need to tie a knot in the end of the thread because we are gonna gather both ends of this fabric to form a pumpkin. And I'm just using a basic running stitch where you take the just in and out of the fabric and then you pull the thread through. My needle is long because it's a craft needle so I can get a few stitches on there before I pull that thread through. Once I've gone all the way around the fabric, I'm going to cinch it together and I'm going to cut the thread and then I'm going to tie a knot using the tail where I tied the original knot and then I'm going to tie another knot here to keep it all together secure. Now I'm going to turn that fabric right side out and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now when I started this side, I started on the inside of the fabric, on the wrong side. I should have started on the outside. Then my tail would have been on the outside when I went to cinch it together. I just had to do a few extra stitches to secure it together. But if you start on the outside, it will just make it easier. Now we don't really need to cinch this side up yet because we need to add the batting. So we just want to get those running stitches in. Now this is version number two, the no sew version, and I just used a Tupperware lid to cut out a circle. Once I got it cut out, I folded the fabric because I want to find the center to cut a little snip so I know where to put the needle through after I gather the fabric. Now we still need to do the running stitch. And I know I called it no sew, but is this really sewing? It, it just didn't need a sewing machine. And now both pumpkins are at the same point of completion and we just need to fill them with the stuffing. And I'm using the stuffing from a Walmart pillow. Don't be afraid to overstuff those pumpkins. I thought I was really using a lot of stuffing and both of them could have used more stuffing. Now here, I'm just cinching that top and tying it together. And now our pumpkin is ready to put in those little indents to make it look like a pumpkin. Now you need a long piece of thread and I'm using the same crochet thread because you wanna use a thread that is not gonna break. So you could also use like nylon fishing line. That would work as well. This thread is gonna to need to go in the pumpkin and then down and then you take it around the outside and you're gonna to need to do that eight times. And this, this was the only part that was a little bit difficult, just getting that needle in the bottom of the pumpkin, pulling it through the batting and then out the top. So you're always gonna go in the same side and come out the same side. I think it'll make sense as you watch me do it. Once I got the needle through and pulled the thread to make the little indent in the pumpkin, I would hold it with my fingers as I made the next stitch, just so, I, just so that my pumpkin would stay puckered with the indents.
I think this is why this particular project is fun to make because as you do it, like right now you're going, oh, it already looks like a pumpkin. And it just like encourages you to keep going, even though it's not hard. It's just fun when something comes together pretty quickly. Now right here, I've made my last stitch, but I want to finish on the other side because the tail where I started is on the other side. So I just take it back through the bottom. I came down out the bottom. Now I'm going back up the bottom and I just bring it back through and then I'm going to tie it off right there. Now, once I get it all done, I I'm I think it will look cuter with string instead of this crochet thread. So I actually took it all out and redid it. But here I'm I used a different needle and I'm showing you how to I mean you do basically the exact same thing. It's just a little tougher with that string because it's so much thicker. So what I did is like I I pushed it I like I let the table I kind of pushed against the table till I could pop that needle through the top. And once you get going it's fine. It's a little more work but not that much and I think it really looks cute with the string. And I think this is just Dollar Tree's string. And here I have it at normal speed because I want you to see it is a little work to get that string through. So here I'm pushing on the table to, and there I pop it through. And just make sure you have your thread, your thread. I wish I could tell you how long of thread to cut because everybody's pumpkin is going to be different. but just do it long like right here I pulled the needle off by mistake I just had to re-thread it and push it back through and if your and if your string was too short you would just tie a knot and keep going but here's all three done and I'm giving them the stuff test do they could they all have used more stuffing yes but I still think they turned out cute I recently painted a table that I put my plants on and this was around the top of the table. I think this table was from the 50s. So you know I was going to take this and save it because of all those spindles, which are perfect for the stem of my pumpkin. Now getting the spindles off was another matter. One came right off. I finally could twist another one off, but I still need two more. I recently purchased this tool off of Amazon. It was only like seven or eight dollars and I got it initially I thought it would be great to have in my craft room for cutting like styrofoam. This thing is pretty sharp so I thought you know what I'm going to try it on these spindles. I'm going to see how sharp this blade really is and this is the wrong way to use this tool cutting towards your hand because it is pretty <laughs> it is pretty sharp and uh, yeah went right through my nail. This is the correct way to use it, which everyone knows, but you know, I had to try it the other way. Now I have all my spindles, so I'm just trying to sand some of the, there was some glue on the bottom of the spindles. And so I'm just giving them a quick sand. And I used a little Waverly Antique Wax to just even out the color on the spindles. Once I get everything covered in the wax, then I go back and I wipe off the excess wax. And then we're ready to put on my pumpkin. Now, the way I attached the spindle to the top of the pumpkin is I just use it a big glob of hot glue. Because that, once that dries, it's going to all be decorated. You're never going to see it. And right there, I put a button to cover the hole 
that we made on the no sew pumpkin. And you can kind of see the difference in the pumpkins in this picture. The two on the right are the pumpkins that we that I made with the they were gathered on the top and the bottom and now that one that's on the bottom left that is the no sew pumpkin. So it's just a little bit flatter. All four pumpkins I decorated a little bit differently, but the one thing they all got was the moss. And I put that around the top of each pumpkin. These leaves I had purchased from Dollar Tree, but they were just too bright. So I took my distressing ink from, I think it's from Tim Holtz, and I just tried to darken up the, the leaves so they weren't quite so bright. Now my pumpkins were pretty small and so I decided to try to make a bow this way. I just took some, this is wired burlap ribbon. It's like a burlap. It's a kind of a loose weave. I dovetailed the ends and then I just tied it, I cinched it in the middle with that same string and I tied it to my spindle. And then I took the leaves and just some flowers, fall flowers that I had, and I just added them to the pumpkins. Each pumpkin I did a little bit differently. And if you craft, you probably have a lot of little pieces that you've saved. And this is the perfect project for that because not every pumpkin has to look the same. And the last pumpkin I did, which you won't see till the final picture, it only has the moss around the top. I go back and forth. Sometimes I like things more simple and then sometimes I like them highly decorated. So this is a combination of both. So you'll have to let me know which way you like the best and what kind of crafter are you? Do you like that over the top decorated, which these none of these are, or do you like the more simple? And here's how all four of my pumpkins turned out with various degrees of embellishment on top. So you'll have to let me know which one do you like best. And on to DIY number two. Yes, I know. I do buy the weirdest things at thrift stores but I bought them because of the shape. There's two pumpkins I don't have to cut out, and I know I can paint them. You can see I paid $1.99 for each of them, and this is what they look like after I sanded them. And then I gave them two coats of white paint, and I'm gonna decoupage with this craft wrapping paper. I also, you see my mold out? I was thinking about using it. I ended up not. You know when you first start a project, you got a lot of ideas, and then it, your project just evolves and <laughs> you, you never know. This paper is so thick that I used quite a bit of water because I want, it, I want to take that curl out of it. I just want it to lay down when I put it over the decoupage gel. And I'm using Redesigned by Prima decoupage gel. I put down a nice thick layer of the decoupage gel. Watching this video back, I don't know why I didn't use a brayer. This would have been the perfect project because you're not, the paper's so thick, you're not really worried about wrinkles. You just want to make sure that it is adhering to that piece of wood. So you want everything down. So that's why I'm using this cloth. Once the paper was dry, I went around with my finger sander and I sanded off the extra paper.
And then I use my watercolor pen so I could tear off the top of the paper because I'm not going to, I don't want it over my stem. I'm going to do something different to the stem. And to seal everything, I put one coat of decoupage gel over the top. I have seen a couple of YouTube creators use this Bodabra to make messy bows. And I thought, you know what? I think I thrifted one of those. So, and I did, I found it. <laughs> I, was, I was very excited that number one, I had thrifted one and number two, I could find it. Because if you make a messy bow, the hardest, messy bows are easy. The hardest part is like keeping everything together to tie it. And this is genius. I would have never thought to do it this way. I just wish I could, I knew who to give credit for the idea because it wasn't mine. But look, right there, $1.97 is what I paid for this Bodabra. And I think they're like 25 bucks on Amazon. So now you know what it looks like, you have to look for one at the thrift store. And if you've never made a messy bow, you just cut out a, just, a, a, just a bunch of different ribbons or fabric or string and you just put it all together and you tie it and they just always look cute. You just kind of fluff it. Now you're probably wondering why, why, I paint, why I did the messy bill before I painted it. But sometimes when you do a project and you're not sure how it's gonna look, you like wanna do all the things that's gonna make it look good first, like the messy bow. And then, you know, I could paint the sides later. Now, should I have painted the sides first? Yes, but at the time I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. So that's why the order is not so great. I went around the edge of the pumpkin with dark wax. Now, I had already sealed it with the decoupage gel so I could go right in with the dark wax. And if I got too much on, I could just I just wiped it off with a paper towel. And again, not the right order, but this is the way I did it. I painted the sides and the back. And then I took a paper towel and I wiped back some of the paint. I just wanted it to look like a stain and I wanted it to be lighter than the stem. And just so you can remember how they started out, and here's what they look like now. The second pumpkin is also some wrapping paper, and I did it the exact same way. I also added a button to my messy bows, but you'll have to let me know what you think. Would you have walked right by those jack-o'-lantern painted pumpkins at a thrift store? And on to DIY number three. If you look on the internet for the ingredients that you need to make something rusty, they all agree on the same ingredients. They just don't agree on the quantities. So I'm gonna tell you how I do mine. Last year, I thought it would be fun to make a Christmas video using rusted Christmas cookie ornaments. So this footage is from last year. But I have to tell you, when I rust things today, I use a different order, but it just goes to show the order doesn't matter, just the ingredients. Now here I've picked out all the ornaments, the Christmas ornaments that I want to rust. And now if I was doing this, I would cover everything in vinegar and I would let it like sit a day. But here I start with hydrogen peroxide and I just pour some over all of the ornaments. Then I add salt. And here I added the vinegar last. Since this time I have read that the vinegar is acidic and it helps break down the metal to help it rust. But obviously it works either way. So you choose how you want to do it. 
it's kind of interesting watching this because I don't stir anything up anymore. Uh, if you had asked me if I had done it this way, I probably would have said no. But when you see it, when you when I'm stirring it up and it looks rusty, the water looks rusty, that's just leftover rusty, crusty stuff that was in this bowl because this is the bowl I always use to rust items. I had a lot of product in this bowl, so I decided to add some bells and some kind of mold that I had thrifted. And if you look real closely at this picture, this is after a few days, you can see that the bells rusted right away, probably because they are a cheaper metal. So everything doesn't rust at the same rate. The cookie cutters are just starting to rust and that mold, that I, it never really got rusty. I, I probably needed to leave it out there a lot, a lot longer. I just ended up not rusting it. But here is my batch that I'm rusting right now, and that's gonna be used in the next DIY. And you can see I have left these out a long time. Now you don't need to leave it two weeks because this all can happen in just a few days. It's just that I put it outside and I usually just kind of forget about it because I rust different things just to have them on hand. And I'm gonna use this jar lid in the next DIY and we're gonna get started right now. I printed out these labels that I had, they were a digital download from Etsy and I printed them to rice paper. And here I'm just taking my watercolor pen to dampen the paper so it's easier to tear out the design. I just love primitive decor in my kitchen during the fall and Christmas season. I just think it's a warm, cozy look. So I'm gonna make these jars to go with my pumpkins. I'm gonna decoupage this label using the Outdoor Mod Podge. And then I'm gonna work in small sections and I'm gonna add the cinnamon mixture to give it that primitive look. This is what I use. And you have to remember that once you get it wet with the Mod Podge, it's going to darken up. But you really need to be careful with the instant coffee because that can really darken it up once it gets wet. If you like Primitive, some great channels to follow for inspiration are Sandy's Country Crafts and Shelly at Repurposed My Way. I think you'll like them both. I really like a darker look, so I'm gonna add the instant coffee on all by itself. Once everything was dry, I went over it with a final coat of Mod Podge. That's gonna seal all that cinnamon in and it's gonna darken it up. Now, it does look pretty chunky, but that's because my cinnamon has been sitting in my craft room for probably two years. It still smells good, but it just came out pretty chunky. Here I'm using some coffee to coffee stain some fabric that I'm gonna use to finish the jars, because I actually made three jars. I let the fabric soak for a little while, and then when I thought it was dark enough, I laid them on these trays. Now I just use these trays for crafting, and I just let them dry on the trays. Now, do you remember the bucket at the beginning of this DIY and how rusty everything looked? Well, I added some more vinegar because the top of the jar lid did not look that rusty. And once, once I added all the vinegar, it just like washed all the rusty part out, but it did age it. So I, I love that look way better than the brand new jar look. So I was happy with that. So you can have two options. You can have the rusty crusty look or just the aged look. So here's what my jar looks like when it's all dry. I love that primitive look. To finish the jar, I'm gonna take some of that coffee stained fabric and I'm gonna put it inside the lid. And you can see here that my fingers are stained from the coffee. So next time I'll know to wear gloves. 
Now I'm just going to put it all in the jar lid and I'm going to glue it down. After I rusted all those jar lids, I realized I only had one jar that those lids fit. So this is, I think, a pickle jar. And then I used another mason jar because I wanted all the jars to be different. So anyway, I used some of that coffee stained fabric and I put it over the tops of the other two jars. Once I got it glued down, I took one of my Tim Holtz Distress inks and I just went over the top of the jar just to give it more of that aged primitive look. I added some string. I tied a finger bow. I love a little finger bow. I think they're so cute. And if these fat fingers can tie a finger bow, anybody's fingers can tie a, fi a finger bow. And there are a lot of good YouTube videos on tying a finger bow. And here's how all my primitive jars turned out. And here they are with my pumpkins. And I haven't even decorated my kitchen yet. It's so hard to get in the fall mood when it's still 100 degrees out. And on to DIY number four. Now this DIY, I'm gonna call it a bonus one. That is the glass part that goes over the bulb on a chandelier, which my neighbors left out for trash. And I took the whole chandelier. I used it last year in a Halloween project. And this year I'm gonna make a pumpkin out of one of those glass domes. Now I'm calling it bonus because a lot of the footage is missing. So this is just for inspiration. Well, like all my projects are. So here we go with what I have. And obviously I have spray painted it orange and now I'm cutting down the styrofoam so it will fit up inside the dome. Now this spindle I cut off of a magazine rack that I had thrifted and I thought I would be able to just push it down into the styrofoam, but I was wrong. So I took my screwdriver and I kind of dug out that space so I could glue that spindle down into the space. And I used wood glue down in the hole and then I went around the spindle with some hot glue. I'm going to make another messy bow, but I wanted to show you the ribbon that I, this assortment of ribbon that I get from Michaels. And it's nice, it comes in all different, you know, Christmas, this is one for fall but it's just a nice assortment of ribbon. Now you can see here, I have already glued some leaves onto the top of this little pumpkin and those leaves I have cut off some garland that I had thrifted and you'll see it here in a minute. And that right there is the wired, um, no, the paper, the wired cover paper. And I made just the tendrils out of that. Now, I've already made a messy, messy bow, which again, I'm missing the footage, but you can see here, I tried to use like um, fancier ribbon. And then I had these jewels. So instead of using a button, I'm using these jewels things <laughs> to make my bow. Here's that garland that I had thrifted and I'm adding a couple more leaves. And here's how it turned out. I have it next to my shabby chic pumpkin that I made last fall that now has a crack in the back, but I just turn it to the backside so you don't see it. I broke it right after I took the picture last year. But anyway, I think they look cute together. So we've gone from primitive to shabby chic. 
But anyway, I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.